to note about multi-step equations is how can we spot them. Uh, now in your uh, paper, if you're higher tier separate science or combined science, you will have a multi-step equation. Now my first example of one is, is one that isn't a multi-step equation. How do we know? Well, let's underline what we've got. We've got power and we've got resistance and the question is asking us to find current. So that's only two things we're given with a third to find out. So it is going to take us one equation. The thing that catches people out is the fact that it's five marks. However, it's five marks because there's a conversion and it's the two significant figures. Okay, so just to follow through with this one, um, and if you don't do this already, please start doing it. Uh, we're going to use something, uh, well, you're going to use the FIFA method, you can use anything similar. So my F is stands for formula. So the equation I'm going to use is power equals I squared times by R from your equation sheet. I'm going to insert my values. I'm going to make sure I convert them first. This is in kilowatts. So I've got 2,500 watts. Uh, make sure you get the mark for that bit. And the current, I don't know, so I'm going to leave it as I squared. The resistance is 17. This far, I've got two marks for doing those two things. Now, to finish off, I've got to get rid of a time 17. So 2,500 divided by 17 equals I squared. Um, and to get rid of the squared, we have to square root the whole thing. Okay. So um, if I find out I squared first, that happens to equal about 147.058, uh, etc. Um, so therefore, I equals the square root of that. Uh, which happens to be uh, 12.1, um, which is not too, too significant figure, so therefore it's going to be 12. Um, so make sure you put 12 in your answer box instead of 12.1. Okay, so that's one step equation. The rest of them we're going to look at all contain at least uh, two different equations, and some get really tricky towards the end. So it's a really good idea if you, before I start, go through a question, maybe pause it, see if you can figure out the equations and solve it yourself with a pen and paper um, before we start, okay? Now, it is worth saying that these are all taken out of context. They're just bits and pieces of AQA papers for separate and combined science throughout the uh, years, and they don't have the rest of the question there with them. So the first question we're gonna look at is a car being released, um, and for the context in this question, it gets from released from the top of a slope and to the bottom of a slope. It says calculate the possible speed. So our first step with these types of equations is to think about what equations would be useful. I've got mass, I've got height, I've got gravitational field strength. And there's only two uh, equations that have gravitational field strength and then only one for paper one. So that's your first hint, is that we might have to use the gravitational potential energy equation, uh, which is this one here. Now, before I even know what the second equation is, I'm just gonna solve this, because actually I can work out, I've got the mass, I've got gravitational field strength, um, and I actually can work, I've got the change in height already. So I've got everything I need here, so let's just dive in and solve this one nice and quickly. So 0.04 times by gravitational field strength, 9.8, times by this in meters is 0.9, get the mark there, uh, 0.9 meters uh, first up. So once I know what that is, this is gonna give me a little bit of a hint on what to do with the rest of the question. So this happens to be uh, 0.352 um, joules. Okay, so that's my kind of three marks already. Um, next is to figure out, well, speed. Now I've got speed, I've still got mass, um, I've got some form of energy, okay? Now there's only one equation for paper one that has speed in it, and that is the one for kinetic energy. So one leap you have to make, and this comes up a lot, is to say, well, actually, all the kinetic energy it gains by going down the slope comes from its potential energy. So I'm gonna use a little bit of space down the bottom here just to write this in full, because I'm going nice and quickly. So the kinetic energy equation is half times mass times speed squared, um, and the energy is the same as the gravitational energy from earlier in our calculations because it's all getting first converted into kinetic energy. The mass of the car is still the same um, and speed is what we are trying to find out. So that's our setup for that part of the question. Now, next, um, it's up to you if you wanna do this bit first or not. Um, however, I'm just gonna uh, do it all with one calculation. Um, you could times those two things together if you wanted to. So 0.352 divided by a half times 0.04 uh, will give me V squared. Okay, now instead of V squared, I want V, so therefore I'm gonna have to make sure I square root uh, everything at the end. So I'm square rooting whatever the answer of this uh, happens to be. So one half divided by 0 0.04. Uh, so let's put it on our calculators and see what it comes to, see if it sounds reasonable. Put that into your calculator, it comes out as 4.2, which yeah, sounds about reasonable for a toy car. And that's our five marks uh, for this question. Right, for this next one, um, we've got a totally different situation. This is six marks, and we've got the power of the kettle, uh, which is two, 2.6 kilowatts. So let's write that one in as watts, just to get our marks straight away. Uh, we've got time taken, uh, we've got a mass, um, and we've also got a temperature change. And the question 
is going to work out specific heat capacity. Now, um, normally I'd say write down all the questions, the equations you can. However, there's literally only one equation that has specific heat capacity in it, and it's this one here. So we know we're going to have to use this at some point. So let's make a note of it already. So I have the mass. I'm trying to find specific heat capacity. I have temperature. The issue is I don't have energy. So I'm going to have to find another way of finding that out. Now, instead of energy, I've got power and I've got time. Okay. So there is an equation that has energy and power equals power times by time, or power equals energy over time. Same thing. Now I've got the power and the time, so let's see if I can work out what the energy is. 2600 times by the time, which is 120, uh, which we don't need to convert in seconds. That is absolutely fine as it is. Um, so let's stick that in, which happens to be 312000. Um, next, now we know what that is. Hey, that solves our problem up here. Now I've only got one thing to find in this equation. So let's put this into my values, uh, my values into my equation. So 312000 equals uh, my mass, so 0.80. Uh, times by C or write X for specific heat capacity times by my change in temperature. Now it might be writing this worth writing this down straight away. Uh, that is a difference of 82 degrees. Um, so that if you're trying to find C, you've got to get rid of both those terms onto this side here. So uh, make sure you use brackets if you're doing it um, all at once. Uh, so 0 0.8 times by 82. Uh, let's whack that into the calculator. See what it comes out as. Um, so C is 4756.09. Uh, now this question asks us to do it to two significant figures, so therefore that becomes 4800, uh, which is a healthy six marks for this question. Next one we're going to look at uh, is over the page. Uh, this is all about a um, it's electrical question, um, so we've got to find some equations. Now the electrical uh, multi-step equations can often be done in a couple of ways, plus um, they can be quite tricky because there's a lot of electrical equations. So we are looking for the uh, equation that's got time, we've got resistance, uh, we've got power um, and we're trying to find the charge okay so like i said there's a couple of ways of doing this one and um, we might find there's a better one uh, how you like to do it um, i prefer to use so for the charge um, these current times time there's only a couple of equations that have charge in it so charge equals current times by time now for this one we've got the time but we don't have the current so i need to find another way of getting the current so current i've got power and i've got resistance so i'm going to use this equation here the one we used from earlier uh, power equals current squared times resistance. And once I find what this is, I can then use it in this equation, um, and that's just uh, easy than finding the charge. So first things first, um, there's no conversions. We've had a quick check. Um, so the power is 3, uh, the current squared stays as it is, and resistance is 12. So therefore, I can work out I squared equals uh, 3 divided by 12. And then obviously, I've got to make sure to square root it at the end. Um, so I is equal to the square root of uh, 3 over 12, or 0 0.25, um, which happens to be 0 0.5. So that's my that's uh, three out of my uh, six marks done already for working out the current. Now, I've not got room here because I'm trying to do it quickly, and I've uh, printed out very small. Um, but to finish off, I'm going to write down the charge equals current times by time. Um, and the current, I've just worked out 0 0.5. The time, I should have written this down earlier, but I'm trying to rush through, uh, is 60 seconds. So it has to be in seconds, not in minutes. So therefore, this times by 60 um, is going to give us a charge of 30. And there's a mark for the unit, which is coulombs, or capital C, for charge. Okay, next one. Um, we're talking about energy uh, released with a change of state. Um, now, we've not got any context to this question, but essentially, um, it's some condensation. And it tells us the volume of the um, amount of water, a gas that's condensing gives us the density, gives us specific latent heat of vaporization. Okay. Now again, uh, we can write down loads of equations. However, there's only one that's got this term in it, which is energy equals mass times by latent heat of vaporization. There's also only one equation that's got density here for paper one. So that makes our life a bit easier, which is quite nice. So we've got those two equations to use. So the energy we need to work out is by working out the mass times by latent heat. So I don't know what these two are. I do know what the latent heat is. If I can find a way of getting the mass, I can just finish off that okay so we can use the density equation um, so density a thousand equals the mass times by the uh, divide by the volume which is 2.5 times 10 to the minus 5 and um, that then means my mass I'm just going to do it down here to save a little bit of room later on uh, the mass is equal to a thousand times by uh, that number in standard form you can keep it in standard form that's fine um, if you put that into your calculator uh, you should get that to be 0 0.025 kilograms and then to uh, finish off, we've then got to put it back into this equation here. So energy equals mass times by latent heat, which is our mass we just worked out, 0 0.025 times by uh, 2.26 times 10 to the power of 6. That's this value here. And again, you stick that onto your calculator, see what comes up the other end. 
uh, and you should find that equals um, 56500 uh, in joules. Okay, and for the last questions I'm going to go through today, those are the really typical kinds of questions you'll find in paper one. Uh, this is the hardest type of question that could come up that involves multi-step, okay? It's come up once in combined science for AQA, once in uh, for separate science um, for AQA, uh, and it's a little bit of a level up from the other ones, so let's have a look. Right, so same as anything, um, let's circle or underline values we've got. We have a temperature, um, and we have a temperature change, because the temperature of this ice cube goes from minus 15 to zero. Uh, we have some energy, um, which sounds useful. We've got specific latent heat, and we've got specific heat capacity, two values here, and we're trying to find the mass, okay? Now, bear in mind we've both got both the specific heat capacity and latent heat. Um, we might need to use both equations, so uh, we're going to write both of them down. So m energy equals mass times by latent heat, and energy equals mass times by specific heat capacity times by change in temperature. Okay. Now, whichever one of these you try and do, um, it won't work if you just use the energy as being this value here. Because this is the energy, if you read it carefully, it says it's needed to raise the temperature of the ice cube and completely melt the ice cube. So it's not just one of these things, it's both. So let me show you how you do this. It's a really neat trick we can use. Okay. So what we say is that the total energy is being used to both melt, so um, involved in latent heat, and is being used to increase the temperature. Because it's the same energy, we can combine those two equations together. Sorry, get my times mixed up. Um, so we've got mass times by latent heat plus mass times by specific heat capacity times temperature change. Okay. Now the idea is that both these equations, the mass what we're trying to find, is actually the same because it's still, still an ice cube. We're just melting it, then heating it up. So let me set this one up. Um, so the energy we've got is five eight four eight joules um, equals, and I'm going to keep it in brackets just to make sure my terms are separate. Mass times by latent heat, which is 334000, plus the mass times by specific heat capacity, so that's 2100, and the temperature change, which goes from minus 15 to 0, so that's a change of 15. Okay, now it looks a little bit messy at the time um, I'm writing this, I uh, know it will do. However, we can neaten things up, and I'm going to show you how to neaten things up now. So 5848 equals, and I've got 334000. M, just like in maths, you'd write it you know, in terms of X, we're writing it in terms of M, plus, and I'm going to do this little sum together now, um, so I've got uh, 2,100 times by 15M, okay? So 2,100 times 15 uh, is, um, one second, times 15, oh no, malfunction, uh, is 3, 3, 4, 31,500. Okay, now we can group these terms of M together because they're all in terms of M. Um, I'm just going to go back to the answer in a second. Uh, so I've now got on this side, uh, I've got 334,000 M's plus 31,500. So if I group all those together, that comes to 36550M um, equals 5848. And then to find M is the easy bit because it's just uh, going to be um, mass equals 5848 divide by that big number 365500 which happens to be 0 0.16 so sorry it's got a bit messy at the end there um, but all I've done is group together those terms of m's um, and then I'm left with a simple equation okay now I know it's quite a tricky one and um, I did that come up twice so we're gonna have a look at a another one down below once I all right, camera adjusted. Okay, so this question looks kind of similar because we've got an initial temperature of 20 degrees. Uh, it tells us a, a temperature it throws at, so we've got a change in temperature. We've got a bunch of energy, internal energy transferred uh, from the mixture to cool it. We've got specific heat capacity and latent heat again, and it's telling us to find the mass again, okay? So it is basically the same question apart from just two significant figures, okay? So if you understood the last one, maybe pause the video here. If you understood the last one, you can figure out this one um, to, to see what the mass is. Okay, so we're going to set up in exactly the same way. It's the same form of question. We're going to say the energy um, is equal to the latent heat, or the mass times by latent heat, um, plus the energy needed to raise its temperature. So this one here, uh, mass times by specific heat capacity times by change in temperature. Now this time there is conversion. We've got 165 kilojoules, or kJ, so 165000 is what we've got on this side. Um, and then we've got mass, which we don't know, times by latent heat, which we have the value there, 255000, uh, uh, plus mass times by specific heat capacity, so 3500 times by a temperature change. Now it goes from 20 to minus 1.5, so therefore that's 21.5. Okay, so uh, let's 
kind of make the left hand side the same the right hand side is what will change here so now I've got um, I'm gonna leave it in brackets but two five five zero 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 in terms of M plus um, three thirty five hundred uh, times by twenty one point five so thirty five hundred times by twenty one point five um, is seven fifty five thousand two hundred and fifty and again that's M okay so it's all in terms of N just to make it easy to figure out what to do with later next we've got to group these terms of uh, M together so we can add them uh, just like we did before um, so I've now got these two values up here and that comes to 330250 oh, oh, uh, M and the energy we use stays the same so that's on this side uh, so where we're going from there is just to find M I'm going to do this divided by the coefficient next to the M so 165000 oh, 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 uh, 330250 uh, equals m and that happens to be around about 0.49 something which it says two significant figures um, so we're going to go with um, uh, 0.50 oh, and that's kilograms um, which makes sense okay so don't forget don't be afraid of multi-step equations and um, they are going to get you five or six marks um, on each of your physics papers um, and if you practice them enough and know how to do them um, they should be source of marks uh, in your exam.